In this lesson, we're going to learn how to navigate to an airfield and land on it. There are three navigation modes that we'll be using, in route, return to base, and landing. These submodes are selected automatically at the appropriate points along the assigned flight path, but they can also be cycled manually. In this lesson, we'll use the automatic method. I currently have the lesson paused as I explain some of the finer points. Press the spacebar to continue. What we'll learn in this lesson is how to navigate to a waypoint using in route mode, switch to return mode automatically, and then switch to landing mode automatically. We are currently in in route mode, as indicated in the bottom left corner of the HUD. This mode allows us to fly from waypoint to waypoint in sequence automatically, as we did in the previous navigation lesson. However, in this lesson, we will try the manual selection. Press the spacebar to continue. You can see that waypoint 1 is selected with a range of 8.6 kilometers. Press left control and tilde to select waypoint 2. You can see that waypoint 2 is 15.5 kilometers from us. As we learned in the prior lesson, we can see the direct heading to the waypoint is indicated by the yellow arrow on the HSI and the twin white arrows indicate our path to fly the course line. Directly above the HSI is the Attitude Director Indicator, or ADI. This is a sphere with one hemisphere white and one hemisphere black. In the center of the ADI is a white aircraft symbol. This aircraft symbol stays stationary in pitch, but will rotate as you maneuver and roll. The ADI ball will move in pitch in relation to the aircraft symbol. When the aircraft symbol center is over black, your nose is below the horizon. If the aircraft symbol center is over white, your nose is pointing above the horizon. Press the spacebar to continue. In the center of the ADI are two yellow lines that help assist you reach the waypoint via the course line. The course line is a direct line between two waypoints. The vertical line indicates your required azimuth steering to reach and maintain the course line. When the yellow vertical line is centered on the ADI, you are flying on or to the course line. If the vertical line is off to either side, Put your stick in that direction until the vertical line centers on the ADI and adjust your roll to keep it centered. The yellow horizontal line indicates your elevation course steering. When centered on the ADI, you are flying at or to the set course altitude for that waypoint. If the yellow line is on the lower half of the ADI, push the stick forward until the yellow horizontal line centers on the ADI and adjust pitch to keep it centered. Conversely, if the yellow horizontal line is above the center line of the ADI, pull back on the stick until the line centers. Along the top and left side of the ADI are your heading and elevation deviation scales. The more the lines are from center, the greater are you are off the direct path to reach the waypoint. Let's practice this as we fly to waypoint 2. I will unpause the lesson when you press the spacebar. You will first need to intercept the course line between waypoints 1 and 2. Note that the ADI steering bars in the HUD navigation circle provide us the same information. Fly the aircraft to center the ADI steering bars by adjusting the pitch and roll to keep the bars centered on the ADI. Or, you can fly to keep the navigation circle on the HUD in the very center of the pitch and bank indicator. The choice is yours. Also remember that the assigned airspeed and altitude for the waypoint are indicated as smaller digits above your current airspeed and altitude. Fly to waypoint 2. Nice job. As you may have noticed, the waypoint automatically cycled to waypoint 3. 
go ahead and fly to waypoint 3 along the course line and maintain a speed of around 400 kilometers per hour. Now that you have reached the last en route waypoint, notice that the return mode has automatically been selected as indicated by RTN in the lower left corner of the HUD. Your navigation steering will now provide you steering to intercept the instrument and landing system beams at the proper heading and altitude. Fly the assigned return navigation. We've now entered the ILS beams and have automatically switched to the landing mode as indicated by the LNDG indication in the bottom left corner of the HUD. The ILS contains a glide slope beam to help guide you vertically and a localizer beam helps you to guide horizontally. Below the landing indication is a K indication that lets you know that you have captured the ILS beams. The upside down L in the lower left side of the HUD indicates that you are on glide slope. If you have not already done so, reduce your airspeed to less than 400 km per hour and lower your landing gear by pressing G. If you need to, deploy your air brakes by pressing B. Lower your landing flaps by pressing left shift and F. Press the spacebar to continue. Also on the HUD are a large and small circle. The large circle is your director circle. As in other modes, fly the aircraft to center of the circle inside the pitch and roll indicator in the center of the HUD. The smaller circle is your glide slope error circle. Like the director circle, you want to center this in the pitch and roll indicator. If the director circle is above the roll and pitch indicator, you are too high. And conversely, if it is below the roll and pitch indicator. If the director circle is left of the center and pitch and roll indicator, it means you are left of the localizer beam and conversely if it is right of the roll and pitch indicator. Once on glide slope, use pitch to control your airspeed and throttle to control your altitude. You just passed the outer marker beacon and your airspeed should be between 290 and 310 kilometers per hour and on glide slope. You have now passed the inner marker beacon and your airspeed should be between 250 and 270 kilometers per hour. You just passed the runway threshold. When the radar altimeter indicates 5 meters, reduce the throttle idle and flare the nose such that the sink rate, as indicated on the right side of the HUD, is between 1 and 2 meters per second. Once all the wheels are on the ground and your speed is below 250 kilometers per hour, 
release the braking chute by pressing P. Hold down the W key to apply the wheel brakes until the aircraft comes to the stop. Looks like you got her down in one piece. You can end the lesson now by pressing the escape key.